Welcome to a very special episode of Ignition. Why? Because I'm standing in Germany's mythical Black Forest, home to fairy tales like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Hansel and Gretel, and this week, an actual real-life unicorn. This is the Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG Edition 507 Wagon. And in my mind, cars don't get much cooler. What makes the C63 AMG Edition 507? Okay, so you gotta start with the base uh, C63. And that car makes 451 horsepower. And then for $6,000 more, you can get the P31 Performance Package. And that ups the horsepower to 481. This motor is known internally as the M156. So it's a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. However, that same basic block with a bunch of different internals is the engine in the Gullwing, and that one's called the M159. So, you take a couple parts out of the M159, you get the forged pistons, forged connecting rods, add in a lighter crankshaft, and all of a sudden the horsepower goes up to 507. Torque remains the same at about 451 pound-feet, and this thing is an absolute rocket ship. I think my fascination with fast wagons actually started with AMG. See, back in the 80s, they made a car called the Hammer. And uh, what AMG would do is they would take your you know, kind of run-of-the-mill E-Class, the W124, and they'd drop a six-liter V8 into it out of the larger S-Class. Classic muscle car recipe, classic formula. And back in the day, those cars tended to be black with black wheels, and they were faster than Ferraris. At the time, as a child of the 70s and the 80s, my parents drove station wagons. I could not believe that there was a station wagon that could keep up with a Testarossa. And actually, I shouldn't say keep up, outrun a Testarossa. Acceleration in this car is absolutely bonkers. It will get to 60 miles an hour in about 3.6 seconds, which is ludicrous for a station wagon, making it one of the fastest in the world. Previously, the Cadillac CTSV was always a very quick station wagon, but that takes a, you know, a languid four seconds to get there. The old E63 wagon, the rear-wheel drive one, was a little bit quicker, it was like 3.8 seconds. Uh, Audi RS6, we've never tested one, but I imagine it's up there too. I think that the new all-wheel drive E63 is going to be faster, but this very well could be the second quickest station wagon in the world. I always forget how great the C-Class is in terms of a chassis. Mercedes has done such a good job making this thing kind of as neutral and as balanced as possible. And one of the benefits of that is this great steering. It's just such linear, responsive steering. It doesn't do any of that variable nonsense. So you always get what you expect, which is what I want out of a car. It's also got good brakes. Engagement's not quite at the top of the pedal, but almost at the top of the pedal, and you can really get on them hard. And it has an automatic transmission, which is too bad, because if this car did have a better way of shifting gears, I'd like it even more. You can forget about a manual. AMG doesn't do that. They do do a nice dual clutch. Um, we've seen this in the new SLS Black Series. That thing is a quick shifting, great transmission. They don't put it in here probably because it's a transaxle, it doesn't exactly fit, but still they should come up with a dual clutch solution for their cars instead of that wet clutch thing, um, which this car has, which is okay, but it's not that fast shifting. You gotta be in Sport Plus to get the fast shifts. And even then, sometimes when you're trying to upshift, for some reason, it'll just ignore you. It'll, you'll miss a shift, which is not what you want in a performance car. But that said, that's a fairly minor complaint. Speaking of minor complaints, the sound. Problem. 
problem is the C-Class is a luxury car, so you're very isolated. Um, our chase car has been saying he's been loving following us around because you can really hear the you know, blare of the exhaust and the overrun when you're downshifting and all that. Inside the cabin, you gotta like strain your ears to hear it, which is really too bad because it does sound great. And you know, naturally aspirated big V8s are just wonderful sounding things. And we know, sadly, they're going away soon. So if there was a way to pull sound insulation out of this car, I would do it. One cool thing the 507 edition gets is this AMG kind of performance center. You get like this temperature pack so I can see my water temperature, my oil temperature, and also the transmission temperature, which, you know, if you drive this thing hard, could be very useful. You also get this power gauge, which tells you the amount of horsepower you're currently making up to 507. It shows you your torque, shows you the percentage throttle. Of course, you get tire pressure, things like that. Then there's this uh, kind of race section and what this does is it gives you your standard stuff like a G meter and the percentage that you're on the brakes and percentage you're on the throttle again. There's a lap timer for the track. There's also a zero to 100 kilometers per hour, or as we would think of it, zero to 62 miles per hour. And my favorite, quarter mile, which I think is hysterical that a German car in Germany is concerned about the quarter mile, but so be it. There's also a little setup section and in there you, there's an AMG button and you can kind of configure what happens when you hit that AMG button, like go to Sport Plus and turn off traction control, that type of thing. The plan was to see how fast I could go on the Autobahn. AMG doesn't give an official top speed, but the 155 mile per hour limiter is removed when you opt for the regular performance pack. Though the 507 is reportedly limited to 280 kilometers per hour, or 174 hour miles per hour, I'd hit 170 miles per hour the day before without much drama. I really wanted to achieve VMAX. The best I could do was 291 kilometers per hour, or 181 miles per hour, before a diesel Audi A3 going about 90 jumped in front of me. The go fast wagon would have kept going, as I'm pretty certain this particular example had no speed limiter. In conclusion, I want this car. I desire this car. I lust after this car. To me, few cars are as alluring as a 507 horsepower station wagon. Sadly, America has fallen in love with SUVs, or at least fat, jacked up sedans cut to look like SUVs. Think about it for a moment. Would you rather have an ML63 or the latest iteration of the AMG Hammer Wagon? You know which way I'd vote.